Yo, Adam Saxon here with Guy in a Cube, and I've got some great things in this week's roundup. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos on Guy in a Cube. With that, let's dig in. I've got a blog post from Sohil Bakshi. This regards DAX measured dependency inside of Power BI or analysis services tabular. This blog post is actually built upon a blog post that Chris Webb had done about how you can use a DMV to actually get the DAX measured dependency. And what Soheal does is takes that and takes it a step further using some visualizations inside of Power BI so you can kind of see what those dependencies are. That's pretty cool. The way this is done with Power BI is you have to connect to the actual port for the SSAS tabular instance which is underneath Power BI Desktop. If you didn't know about that, it exists. You can use tools like DAX Studio to easily find what that port is, or you can go old school and just run a net sh command and get it that way. I found this interesting just from the standpoint of whether we're debugging or we're trying to optimize our data model. Sometimes understanding our DAX measured dependencies can be really helpful in understanding how our model's actually laid out and maybe the layers that we have to go through, kind of like peeling an onion. Onions? have layers. Ogres have layers. Onions have layers. You get it. We both have layers. So if you're interested in this kind of thing, check out the blog post. Links down below. Paul Turley's got a blog post for you talking about whether you should use SQL, M syntax inside of Power Query, or DAX. I like this question a lot because it helps me to give my most favorite answer in the whole world. It depends. So Paul walks through using an example of how to create a date table, and he walks through how to do this from a SQL standpoint, an M syntax standpoint, and using DAX inside of Power BI. And honestly, the, the lesson that I took away from this is just one I've learned over a long period of time that for most things technology related and life in general, usually there's more than one way to do something. And that's specifically true in this case. We could do it in SQL, we can do it in M, and we can do it in DAX. There are pros and cons to doing each one, and you're gonna have to decide. Sometimes it'll come down to a business decision. Sometimes it comes down to performance basis. Sometimes it comes down to, hey, which one do I have available to me? I may not have access to SQL, but I may have access to Power BI where I can do it in M or DAX. So it's, it's up to you, but it's good to look at this blog post just to see that there are different ways of doing things and think about what the right tool for the right job is. We have a new feature inside of the Power BI service and that is theming for dashboards. Yay! A lot of people have asked for this type of feature before we could do theming from a report standpoint inside of Power BI Desktop. Now we can do theming inside of our dashboards that are inside of the Power BI service. There are different items you can play with from tile opacity to adding a background image for your dashboard, even an animated GIF. You can get crazy, have someone dancing in the background. So be sure to check it out. If you haven't seen it already, just go to your dashboard, go to settings. There's a desktop or a, not a desktop, a dashboard theme item, and you can start playing with it today. Links is always down in the description below along with bonus items. We have a Power BI service roll-up blog for all the items that were announced in April. And so these items include that we've got a GDPR white paper out there now for Power BI. So be sure to read that, especially if you're in Europe or you're working for companies that have to work with Europe because it may affect you. Also, auditing is now on by default. Before it was off by default, now it is on by default. So be sure to go check that out. It is a tenant setting for your tenant inside of the Power BI admin, uh, admin portal. So if you want to turn that off, you can, but just know that it's on by default now. There was an update for the on-premises data gateway, as well as drill up and drill down functionality inside of the mobile app. Also, there was a really cool video about mixed reality with the HoloLens. Shout out to Miguel who helped make this possible. He is someone that's on my team, the Power BI cat team. And so he did a really cool job of helping with the Power BI visuals inside of that video. He is our design guru. So be sure to check out that video if you haven't seen it. It's a pretty cool video. And if anyone wants to lend me a HoloLens, we got a new Power BI desktop update. This is the March 2018 update. If you haven't updated, be sure to update now. There were a lot of cool things inside of this update. First off, we had updates to conditional formatting. So you can now do this against other fields than what you're actually displaying in your visual. So that's cool. There was an update for sync slicers. We actually dropped a video on Gynacube this week talking about that. There's a new grouping option that's available for you. One cool thing a lot of people commented on is that you can now set your line width to zero 
Got to make sure you have markers on, but then you can have like little dots on your line charts instead of the actual line. So that's kind of cool. And a big thing that came out in the desktop release is that you now have incremental refresh. So I'll link to that video up above as well. That is available for you now it is a premium only feature. It was mentioned in the blog post as well as the incremental refresh blog post that Christian Wade did that this is coming for pro users or shared capacity space. So non-premium, uh, it will be coming at some point. There was no timeline mentioned, but it is coming. So hang in there. And another cool thing that was in the desktop update was an update to the from web connector. So now you can use the from example capabilities in the from web connector. This is really cool if you're working with non-standard tables in the from web experience, you can just use from example and it will try and pick off the data for you. That's pretty cool. All right, time for my favorite item. I think for me, I've got to go with the DAX measure dependency. And uh, that's just because I'm dealing with a lot of model performance issues and helping customers with that. So it's relevant to stuff I'm working on. And I like that. That's cool. But I want to pass it off to you. Let me know what your favorite item in this roundup was. Go ahead and leave that down in the comments below. And I would love to hear it. If you like this video, hit that like button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as as always from both Patrick and myself, thanks so much for watching, keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.